Oh my god, it's finally here, Troy Mythos, baby, and the Minotaur is in action. So, I'm joined here by Rebain Fantasy on the side of Hector, without actually bringing Hector. That's a shame, I guess he decided to hide away somewhere behind the walls of Troy. Meanwhile, we got the brave forces of Achilles himself here, leading the Myrmidons. Now, so... Mythos brought a lot of cool changes, like all the maps have crazy myth assets now, like a bunch of these colossi in the distance, and it brought new units with them. So on large font, it's a little bit hard to bring like um, all the cool new stuff, but we'll see some of the stuff here. So these are the Arimaspoi Hunters, absolutely amazing light spear and shield infantry. These guys not only look pretty cool, they actually perform amazingly well, on the Trojan side, we also have Arimaspoi Javcav, which are honestly, in my opinion, the best Javcav in the game. Cost-effectiveness-wise, at least, these guys are disgustingly insane. And they look pretty cool. I mean, come on. Scythian, Cyclopean relatives? How could you say no to that? Anyway, this was a best of nine series we fought, so there's a lot of games, and I'm gonna show two games today. So, let's get at it. Mudlands, you don't want to bring chariots here, you don't want to get stuck with heavy infantry, you want to be careful with cav, because they're gonna get slowed down, but the new Scythian cavalry, the Arimaspoi, they actually excel in tough terrain, so for them, this is absolutely no problem. And they're one of the win conditions on Hector's side, besides the Minotaur and heavy infantry on my side, it's some heavy, some medium infantry for win condition. Anyway, my hidden infantry units start firing precursors here, because I put them there just to protect against the jab cab, and the slingers start firing, managed to get about 7 kills, which is not too much, but every little bit counts, and the armies are moving. As you can see, Hector wants to close the distance fast, I'm currently uphill, but I'm gonna start moving soon down, because yeah, I can really realize this was way too much of an advantage, this much uphill. So, when it comes to terrain in Troy, terrain is extremely important, and I dare say it might be the most important in any Total War game when it comes to battle performance. Like, for example, look at mud. Light infantry is having no problem going through mud, but look at the heavy infantry. Like, these guys are basically crippled going through mud terrain, and if these were chariots here, I'm not even gonna explain to you how bad it would actually be, like the unit just becomes unusable. We can see some flank maneuvering with the Artemis Poi getting ready to protect against the Cav, Minotaur is getting ready to charge, and we got Meat Shield Infantry on both sides getting ready to blob the charge with some skirmishing. And the most important part now, we're gonna actually get to see a Minotaur in action. Uh, excited? Yeah, the young spears are gonna try to blunt the Minotaur charge, he gets in there and he's gonna start cleaving and tearing. Oh, that's... Well, it's not bad, it looks pretty cool. But we get the Minotaurs and Achilles with the Myrmidons here, trying to fight the Minotaur, that's pretty cool. Let's slow motion and take a look at the battle lines. So the Heavy Swordsmen, which are a pretty good mid-tier unit, are gonna clash with the Elite Guards of Troy here. Young Spears blunted Hector's Chosen Charge, but we're gonna get some Myrmidons and Heavy Swordsmen in there, and the Arimaspoi Hunters are charging the Spear Fighters in the flank, they're definitely gonna win that engagement. Let's take a look at the other side. Here, the Hector's Chosen are destroying my low-tier units, but the Myrmidons are firing their jabs and they're about to engage them. Meanwhile, the skirmishing is going on. Slingers are absolutely massacring the Javelin men. And here, the Arimaspoi are overrunning the flank, as they should be, because they're excellent flanking infantry. I pull them to the side, because I want to get like a clean, really clean rear charge with them. Meanwhile, Achilles is destroying the Minotaur. Like, the Minotaur has so much destructive potential, and my Young Spears are routing here from the guards, but it doesn't really matter. Like, look, Minotaur does like a crazy AoE debuff. It just, like, destroys morale. And here we've got the Arimaspoi connecting with the cavalry. They were taking off skirmish mode, probably, so just like a slight micro slip up, but now they're fighting brother against brother, Cyclopean Scythian relative against Cyclopean Scythian relative, without actually being Cyclopean. Let's take a look at slow motion now. Aegean runners are getting a beautiful flank onto spear fighters here. They're both practically mid tiers, and they're just gonna get massacred now because of that flank. The Minotaur is running away uh, in shame, the Trojans are still hanging on, they're winning on some fronts, losing on some fronts. Myrmidons versus Hector's Chosen, along with some heavy swordsmen, that's pretty cool to see. Meanwhile, the Javelin men keep firing into my Myrmidons. 
It's uh, not looking good for them anyway. The Arima Spoiler are disengaging from the melee line and we're probably gonna see some more casualties. Let's see what's gonna happen now though. Meanwhile, Slingers are just unthreatened this whole game. Like, don't get me wrong, Slingers are not gonna do anything against, like, Hector's Chosen, but they're key here in eliminating the Skirmishers. And speaking of Skirmishing, these guys are actually getting some Precursors ja Precursor Javelins aimed at the back. Speaking of Javelins, the Arima Spoil Skirmishers are also shooting and trying to disengage. Meanwhile, on the right flank, it seems like the Myrmidons and Heavy Swordsmen are pulling this one kind of in their favor with some pretty nice battle animations achilles is fighting the traitorous trojan well not traitorous but vile trojan now because hector is not here this guy is gonna have to be the dueling target and as you can see the dual animations are absolutely amazing in this game look at that like look at that it, it's crazy it's just insane but achilles is obviously going to destroy the random warlord and the heavy swordsman finally route the guards of troy thanks to the help of the adamus boy and aegean runners though sadly my adamus boy hunters get routed here things are pretty much like looking good here for hector's chosen they managed to butcher so many units and they're winning against heavy swordsman but army losses are starting to kick in and this is pretty much it for the forces of hector so, it was a pretty fun game. Let's take a look at the key moments of the battle and what made victory fall into the hands of the Myrmidons, and then let's move on to game two, where we're gonna see some epic Aeneas action. Blobbing the charge of the Trojan elites with my shitty young spears was really good as it just allowed my mid-tiers and my elite Myrmidons to just go into the battle and start causing havoc. Getting Achilles and some of the brave Myrmidons to actually hold down the Minotaur was extremely important as the Minotaur is capable of causing so much damage to armies and the brave Myrmidons led by the main man himself just basically kicked the teeth out of the Minotaur. Getting really good rear charges with Aegean runners into the infantry and getting the Arimaspoi into the cavalry allowed me to basically wrap up the flanks and cause army losses and a mass rout essentially. Alright, so let's get down to business. Achilles costs 2k. This is not cost effective at all. Like, bringing him is really not cost effective, but he will perform damage wise. He did what needed to be done here. He clapped the Minotaur and he clapped the enemy Warlord in a duel, so it is what it is. Young Spears, they're just here to meet shield, they did what they had to do. Aegean runners didn't really get much value, but they were flanking against medium and heavy infantry, so I'd say they were fine. When it comes to heavy swordsmen, some of them did okay, some of them did a little bit less, but they were fine. Myrmidons didn't obviously come close to their value, but they still pulled their weight because they're Myrmidons. Slingers did amazing. Look at the Arimus Poi value. Like, they're like 700, and they, both of them, this guy did a lot of value, and this unit also practically paid for itself. They're crazy good. Now on the Trojan side, not even gonna comment on the Lord. Hector's chosen a lot of kills in mid-tiers, a lot of kills in low-tiers, didn't pull their weight, but they were getting there, just army losses kind of like, you know, screw them over. Minotaur got mauled by Achilles, basically, so he didn't get to do his crazy game-carrying stuff, Guards of Troy didn't really do much. One of the jab units did insane, one of the jab units got routed by the slings. Now look, Arimus Poi Jav Cav, honestly, considering everything in this battle, they did fantastic. Like, this unit is so good, it's actually hard to describe. Light infantry, not much. Spear chargers, not much, because they were intercepted and flanked, and that's about it. Alright, pretty fun game, let's move on. And we're back with round two, look at these giant shades. And they're even wearing snakeskin pants, like, I mean, listen, even if you're basically dead, or better said, undead in this case, you still gotta, you still gotta have some drip, you know what I mean? Anyway, so, the Dardanian faction with Aeneas, 
The wind condition blob up the enemy with extremely cost-efficient chaff, like the Ardanian rabble is disgustingly good. They're cheap infantry for their price. And then win with elites, win with the giant shades, getting empowered by all these deaths, and Aeneas on a chariot, who is an absolute baller. Now, on the Lycaean side, wing chariots, excellent skirmishing chariots, but they're light chariots. If anything sneezes at them, they will basically die. From the myth unit side, we've got some uh, Johnny Sins tribesmen, I mean, uh, <clears throat> drinkers of venom here, which are also pretty good chaff. We've got uh, renowned Kopesh fighters, which are pretty good too, so I'm gonna rely on my heavy infantry to carry this, and another cool unit, the Spartoi, which became uh, based on the Cadmian myth now. They're basically sewn from Dragon Teeth, so as you can see, they're kind of like undead slash constructs at the same time. Pretty cool. Now, let's get on to the actual battle. So the chariots are moving to just skirmish. They got plenty of ammo, and with this patch, they got a buff. I believe I forgot to put them off of uh, skirmish mode this game, which uh, could be disastrous. And now Aeneas is also in a jab chariot, so he's managing to land some damage on them. Now, even though they were on skirmish mode, they actually didn't move away, so a part of them gets clipped by the Dardanian rabble. Like, they're still gonna manage to get a little bit of HP damage to them, but this is not really what I wanted to happen to the chariots. Like. This is still dangerous, even if they're fighting against something as bad as Chaff, because, hey, once again, they are light chariots, they're not meant for that, so... We're gonna see them maneuvering around a little bit more, and we're actually gonna see a light chariot charge at the last moment here, just, like, mowing some of them down while they're fighting, and the Harpies are flying overhead. Harpies are actually going to try to connect into my slingers, and because they're uncontested, let's go slow motion. So, they're managing to catch my slingers and tear them apart, and they also caught a little bit of the chariots. The chaff is fighting here, the venom drinkers versus the Dardanian rabble. The, the um, Hydra venom drinkers are obviously gonna win this, and the chariots are doing a lot of damage to the chaff, but listen, their missile chariots, they might still be buggy, and their light chariots, they're just still taking so much HP damage, it's crazy. The Gigantes are moving in now, Giant Shades, god damn it, I love that unit, it is so cool. Meanwhile, we've got the Spartoi still in the forest, getting ready for a potentially sneaky ambush, and the Chaff is just engaging into my renowned Compesh fighters, nothing I can do about that. I don't have even close to the numerical advantage, I just have to take these engagements, at the moment at least. And they're just gonna be able to cut through the Dardanian rabble without a problem, but who says the rabble is a problem? Now, the chariots are just taking so much damage, even when they're attacking from the behind. Like, they're light chariots, they got a few harpies here with them, it's fine though. The melee front, the giants are doing so much damage to the Drinkers of Adam. Just look at this, with every swing. Like, they just don't care. So much splash, and they look hella cool while they're doing this. Here, my infantry is obviously winning, right? It's chaff. I have no problem, but now they're going to fight the fearless swordsmen, which are Aeneas' elite troops. These heavy javelin men, though, I just want you to take a look at this unit for a moment. They're insanely cool and insanely good. Like, javelins are just so good right now, and Aeneas is just proving that also by peppering my troops all the time, looking pimped out a cell, and maybe he'll get to prove it in melee soon. Now let's go slow-mo and let's take a look at the tactical view for a moment. So the left flank of the Dardanians obviously collapsed. My chariots are extremely badly damaged and my infantry is still holding on. My center is kind of collapsing. The giants are doing like the work of the gods. On the right side, winning some engagements, losing some. The javelins are basically destroying the um, Spartoi from the behind, like, Spartoi would destroy renowned Soren fighters with a proper charge, but they're getting peppered, and I do not have a counter with this build to the Anatolian skirmishers at the moment, because my chariots are too badly damaged to do anything. The center is just breaking through all the crazy giant action, they are just so awesome. Meanwhile, fearless swordsmen are winning against the Kopesh fighters here, but not for long, as the giants are starting to flank the Kopesh fighters, and that's um, not gonna be, gonna be good for my dudes, even though I managed to take out a giant, as you saw there. Just look at the animations, they're so cool. Now, the chariots are coming back, but the javelin men are opening fire on them, heavy Anatolian skirmishers, 
40 missile damage. Like, these guys are well worth their price. They can pull off so much. And the chariots are just sadly not gonna do much here. Now, here I'm winning against the Sworn Fighters, but I'm doing a big mistake here. I wasn't aware of this at the time. I totally forgot, but Spartoi got a new ability with the patch now that they're undead slash constructs. They can actually go AFK and heal themselves with an ability and regenerate models, not just health, but also models. And this is kind of important in the battle. I basically lost an elite unit because I did not know that they could do that. I totally forgot about that. Meanwhile, at the back, my archer here is just firing into the giants, trying to take them out with mixed success because the commands were kind of weird. And here, the companions of Sarpedon, they are an awesome heavy axe unit, and they're just trying their best to tank through the onslaught of elite swords and giant ghosts. Meanwhile, the drinker's chaff is charging from the back. They're just gonna apply their awesome poison, but it's not gonna be much. Here the javelins actually get sandwiched, and I finally managed to catch the heavy Anatolian skirms on this side, but it's not looking good though. There's another skirmish unit, and Aeneas himself is finally joining the fray in melee. He did some pretty decent jab damage, but how is it actually gonna happen in melee? Well, we're about to find out. The center is crumbling. Let's take a look at tactical again. So center, nothing. Left side, Kopesh guys are winning, but there's a full health Anatolian unit, which is not good for me. And my right flank is moving to finally engage the giants and try to kill them. They're monstrously powerful after all the deaths. Like with 1800 deaths, these guys get crazy stats. Look at them now, 500 damage. Like these guys are absolute late game threat. They need to be dealt with. But Aeneas is finally in the melee on his chariot. Let's go slow-mo and let's take a look at some of the animations if he's even attacking from the chariot here. Like, let me just... I can't even find him from the blob. Oh, well. Aeneas is still doing a lot of damage here. Like, Aeneas is one of those legendary heroes that can actually turn a game around. Like, he's just honestly crazy. Spartoi, because they're not healed up, they're just gonna be worthless here, and that's a complete waste of a unit. The Javelin Men are coming back. On the right flank, the renowned Kopesh fighters are losing to the Fearless Swordsmen now. Slingers are having a clear arc of fire into the Giants, but they're honestly not gonna do much. And my Archer Hero is desperately trying to take out the Giants, and they're holding on. They're unbreakable. They're undead. They don't care. Their job is done. They're just here to kill more before they're sent back to the underworld but the javelins are here and the javelins are just like devastating they're killing my chariots they're killing my infantry unit with uh, all they've got and they've still got some ammo to spare this on tactical is not looking good basically my infantry win conditions even though they were hard winning before now they're collapsing because of the jabs and the giants are just insane i am loving it I am so happy that the giant shades are good. Like Cerberus units, they're they're insane, especially when you meet their win condition and with Dardania, you can easily meet their win condition cuz hey, guess what? You're sacrificing your troops, so no problem. They're going to be chasing the slingers here, but honestly, this is practically it. Aeneas chariot got destroyed and now he's actually going to charge for my general who is just casually firing until his ammo runs out. The rest of the battle is pretty much decided, there is not much to do, so let's just take a look at a little bit of um, Aeneas animations before we go on and see what made the Dardanians win this game. Screwing up with the chariots in the beginning was really annoying. I don't know if it was a skirmish mode bug or not, but the commands were really weird and they just ended up losing so much health. Even though the chariots did a lot of damage to chaff, they were just not healthy enough to actually deal with the late game threats and that was really bad. The giants. Like seriously, giant shades are amazing. They got a little bit worse offensive stats than regular giants, but they're unbreakable and every kill fuels them. Eventually, they just turn into unstoppable beasts. If you can't remove them, they will just demolish and demolish in this battle they have. 
Forgetting to heal my Spartoi was really bad, because those guys could have definitely regenerated enough health and models to actually destroy the undead giants and actually potentially turn the tide of the battle around, so that was a disaster. But once again, you gotta learn what your units do, because if you don't, this happens. Honestly, flawless usage of the heavy javelins was what carried the game here. Like, this unit is crazy, and they performed so well in this game. Like, absolute win con. Okay, that was an insane game. It looked assured, but uh, then it wasn't, because jabs are awesome and the giants are just... Mwah, loving it. Anyway, let's go. So the archer hero did fine value, but the targeting was kind of weird. I feel like there's still some bugs with certain missile entities or units with targeting, and it kind of felt like that. But once they started connecting shots, or better said, once he started connecting shots, it was kind of fine. Kopesh Swordsmen, honestly, they killed a ton of chaff, as you can expect, and they performed fine against, like, Fearless Swordsmen. They did their job. Sarpedon's companions didn't really do that good, however. Slingers got really good value. One of them got amazing value, the other one got devoured by Harpies, it is what it is. And the Chariots honestly had a lot of kills, and they could have been used better. I don't know, the skirmish mode kind of bugged them out there, I don't know why they didn't respond to commands. They could have definitely been used better, and they did a lot of damage, and they could have been a late game win condition, but it is what it is. Now, Spartoi didn't get nowhere close to their value. The javelins demolished them, and I didn't heal them up. Like, this is massive about this unit now. They can get healed up and restore models. Like, Spartoi are just even crazier now than they were before. And the chaff, honestly, I really like the Drinkers of Venom. Like, they're pretty good. Aeneas, obviously, epic heroes, hard to get value, but he killed some chariots, actually, with his javelins, which was good. He assisted in the melee fight against elite infantry. It was fine. Now, the chaff did their job. They tied my stuff up, actually got some okay damage in, and sacrificed themselves to empower the giants. Renowned fighters, one of them garbage, one of them actually pretty good. Elite Swords, they did pretty good overall, honestly, pretty much getting their value back. The ja Look at the value in the Javelins, like, absolute MVPs. If you don't have an answer to win conditions, this is what happens. Like, these guys are absolutely worth the money, I love this unit, I'm always happy when I see it in action, and Robain loves his Javelin men, these guys are awesome. Harpy Fiends, honestly, not really much gold value, but they did mess up my chariots a bit and the slingers, so it was good. And giants. Look at the damage value. Their gold value, nobody cares about that. I don't care. They were cool. Amazingly cool, in fact. And this DLC so far is proven to be extremely cool. So yeah, that was a pretty long video, but I hope I've so shown some uh, cool Mythos stuff and we got a lot more Mythos stuff coming up, as well as a lot of Warhammer tournaments. So, uh, hey. Stay tuned for both content, and until the next time, um, get ready for some more Mythos.